Okay. <laughs> hi, hi. Awesome. Everybody can hear me? Yes. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, the presentation is going to be a day with several faces, coordinators, mentors, and interns of OpenStack Outreach Internships. Uh, my name is Victoria Martinez de la Cruz. I am software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I'm the coordinator of the Outreach Internship for about, well, co-coordinator, because I have somebody else working with me. Uh, but I have been coordinating these internships for about two years now. Uh, today with me is Samuel and Nisha. I'll let them introduce yeah. themselves. So hello, my name is Samuel. I am a core developer in Keystone and I have been a, a outreach mentor this round. And I was mentoring Nisha. Yeah. So hello everyone. I'm a final year undergraduate student. And uh, I participated as an outreach intern in the May to August uh, 2016 round, and I'm here to share my perspective, and glad you are here. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. So we split this presentation in three. We are going to start with the point of view of the coordinator, then we are going to talk about how is to be a mentor for Richie, and we will end up with the Nisha experience as an intern. Um, If I can start passing the slides, of course. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay. Well, we have the introduction, but we had your pictures. There you go. Uh, okay, being a coordinator. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce you to what the Richie is. How many of you is familiar with the Richie internships? Please raise your hands. Okay, two, three. Okay, most of you, uh, but still let's, let's do a, a brief overview of what Orichi is. So Orichi is not something about OpenStack only. Uh, it's an internship that it is broader. It has been uh, more than 12 rounds today. It's going to be 10 years since Orichi internships has been around in open source software. Um, the idea of these internships is to bring more people for underrepresented groups uh, to open source communities. Uh, we, in our presenter, we are talking about women. Uh, it is started for women, and now it also includes, of course, the LGBT community and some other communities as well. Uh, it was started mainly by the Genome Foundation. Uh, the first rounds for this internship was in the Genome Foundation. Then it, the project started, like the program started to to cut on, and it got more popular, and it it generated a really good impact on Gnome, so they open it to all our open source organizations. Uh, that's when OpenStack started contributing as well, and um, since then, the Software Freedom Conservancy is the organization that has been leading and organizing these internships. As I said, there was more than 12 rounds to date, and there are still new rounds, more interns uh, for the uh, upcoming months as well. So, uh, when OpenStack has shown these internships. Um, OpenStack showing these internships for the Grizzly release. Uh, that was 2014. In the picture, well, it's, uh, I am in the picture with Anita Cuno and Laura Alves. Uh, we were the first interns for uh, Richie for OpenStack. Um, it has been six rounds since OpenStack has been joining. Uh, we have had a total of 30 interns up to date. We only had four hires of those 30 interns. I, I put that in red because it's something that kind of worries us because um, what we are seeing is that the level of the interns that we have is very good, but there are no entry-level positions in current markets. It's like there are no junior, no internships for our interns to continue working on OpenStack. Um, still, it's, it's okay since no, probably not all of the interns who are looking for, you know, working at OpenStack to continue like in a full-time manner, but it still is like something that we are worried about. And of course, every time we have the chance, it's like we expose it. So maybe, you know, uh, get some attention on that area. Um, Orichi uh, funds itself with sponsors. Uh, a sponsor for OpenStack has been the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, Rackspace, Intel, IBM, HPE, and a few more, but uh, for sure those listed in, in that slide. And 
several projects of OpenStack have joined it. Um, not only coding projects like Horizon, Infra, Glance, Cinder, Sakaar, Sahara, Keystone, but as well we have interest in documentation and there has been some interest in other areas for OpenStack as marketing. So um, how is the Orichi workflow? How, how is that uh, we as coordinators um, organize everything so we can have interns working in OpenStack? Um, so Orichi uh, has rounds every uh, two, two times every year. Um, we have rounds that are for uh, summer usually uh, in the northern hemisphere, but also have for summer in the southern hemisphere. Um, rounds usually goes from May to August, and then we have another one in December to um, March. Um, and we start um, calling for mentors usually. Um, our task as coordinators is to reach to um, people that have experience contributing to OpenStack that work in a full-time manner. And we ask them to propose ideas so interns can pick those tasks and use that task as the, the anchor project for the internship. Um, after we have the mentors proposing their ideas, we have the application period in which mentees uh, reach the mentors listed in, in well, the ideas page for, for all the mentors we, we could um, recruit and they start talking with them, they start um, interacting with the call base of the project they are willing to mentor for, um, they start setting up their development environment, they work in environment in the case of blogs or marketing, they start uh, talking with the community, not only with the mentor. Um, the idea is that in that period, not only they got to apply, but also to know, to start knowing people in the community. Then uh, they propose an application, and they contribute a, a minor patch to the code base so we, we can get uh, a feeling of how would be to work with that intern. Then we have the intern selection in which it's, it, that is a collaborative pro process in which all the people that have worked with that applicant um, collaborate in order, you know, they did feedback on how it was to, to work with this person and uh, we pick interns according to how much funding we have for each round and then we have, after one month more or less, the internship period. The internship lasts three months and uh, it's a paid internship and we expect our interns to work in a full-time manner, that is 40 hours per week because this is an internship as it would be in any other company uh, contributed to OpenStack. Finally, uh, this is something that is about OpenStack. Um, Precisely, it's not for all the projects that uh, join Orichi. Uh, we try to get our interns to attend the OpenStack Summit. Um, why is that? Uh, usually, the foundation is, has been very supportive in this case, since um, our interns attending to the um, OpenStack Summit allowed them to attend to talks, attend to workshops, uh, to attend to design sessions. Uh, we usually, uh, mentors try, uh, well, mentors and coordinators try to get these interns um, to, you know, be able to uh, collaborate with the people. It's like mentors try not only, like, um, to help them to get involved, to break the ice with the rest of the people, but also it's like um, they guide them so they can, you know, have their first summit um, in, in, have a, a good first summit. Um, we also try to help with career advice, um, as, as, as time permits. We try to, to help them to land their first job when they come here. Uh, we try to connect them with people that could might help them to do that. And we also uh, consider that this, this is a great uh, networking opportunity so um, they can start you know, uh, getting into this market. Uh, in the picture, we, well, we see uh, the first one is uh, one of the workshops. The second picture, like uh, the one on the right, is one of our um, previous interns that has given a talk today um, about OpenStack SDK, uh, Shefali. And uh, the other picture is from Vancouver, in which we have a networking session. Uh, I am there in the picture with mentors and interns for previous outreach rounds. 
So what it takes to coordinate. Um, I'm doing this voluntarily. Um, I have joined OpenStack as an intern. I have been a mentor as well and now I'm a coordinator. Um, but it's voluntarily. Any of us, uh, of you, sorry, can um, help coordinate this kind of effort if you think it's important, if you want to, to give back. Uh, I'm doing this, as mentioned, because I'm trying to give it back to the community. And it is, it's not so time consuming, like most people worry about this kind of, you know, extra activities that it's going to be more time consuming, but it's not. Um, what we have to do in order to have, have these kind of internships in OpenStack is to, well, first try to uh, reach mentors, to reach people you consider that are uh, capable, capable enough, um, well, everybody's capable enough, but that might be interested on mentoring and, uh, you know, you, you are willing to help them to understand what it takes to mentor somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to coordinate events. Um, this is Sometimes we have ideas with, with coordinators of having, I don't know, hangouts during the internship so we can help mentors to, you know, uh, get all, everybody together and to connect every mentor and mentee uh, so they get to know each other and we, we kind of build a community around that. And we also try to encourage communication between all of them and so they can later meet on summits and, and meet on some, some other conference and uh, continue with um, what they have been working and uh, anything that might be of their interest to continue um, with this synergy. And with that, I'm going to give uh, Samuel a little word. Yeah. The floor is yours. Okay, so what does it take to be a mentor in a program like Outreach in OpenStack? How is it to work very close to a mentee and actually try to pass some knowledge you have and the mentee doesn't yet. So I'm going to cover a few points here. So first of all, the motivation of um, someone willing to be a mentor. First, um, it's very interesting because when you are um, teaching someone else, you are learning as well. So that's very common because when you are teaching someone else, you got to review everything you know so far and you are going to validate that or not and maybe you can even fix your knowledge, right? Another very important point is that you got to pay forward to the, to the community because um, there was a time when you first joined the community, you were just like your mentee, you didn't know that much and you learned by um, getting help from other folks as well. So that's just how the community works. It is collaborative and you gotta just pay forward. Having um, mentees and very interested folks in, in an organization like OpenStack is also very interesting for um, the organizations involved because they are going to take benefit from the code and from the resources generated there. In our case, Nisha worked in functional tests in Keystone Client. So there, there were no functional tests there. And now we have covered like most of the operations available there. And everybody, every enterprise using the Keystone Client is taking benefit from that. Also, it's very grateful for a mentor to see that you are impacting someone else's life Maybe most of the time that's a positive, positive impact. That's what we expect. And you impact that person by teaching her how to be a better technologist, but also like other things like uh, her career, because you also give some advice on how path, what are the possibilities to go. And they are always very receptive to some, to those kind of advice. Okay, here we have listed some preconditions for being a mentor, for being a very well, who is willing to be a very good mentor from my point of view. So first is experience, because 
if you are going to teach and pass knowledge and have discussions with someone else, it is expected that you have more knowledge in that very specific domain you are going to be working with, right? And second, it's necessary that you have a very well-defined project because that's um, one of the first key points to get a very success successful program. And in Altuichi, that's a point that is, very, uh, that is required because at the first beginning, you have to apply to the program and you have to have a very well-defined project there just to make sure you were looking at things like before, you have a very good idea of what's, what you are going to do during the internship. Also make sure deadlines are set because when you have deadlines and list of things you are expecting, as expecting to be done by that time, you, you can keep track of the progress very easily. And if you lose, them, lose track of the progress, um, your program is very likely to fail you and you don't want to do that. So, for a mentor, for me it's also very important to be able to help on any mentee's questions. That doesn't mean I need to know everything, but if she asks me something that I have no idea what that is, I, I know at least um, all the folks I can ask with her and then we can get a response so we cannot we won't be blocked there. Also make sure your mentee has enough background on the project because um, there's something very interesting that happened to us. That was yeah. um, before this program, so Nisha developed functional tests in Keystone client um, for OpenStack. And before the program, she didn't know about OpenStack she didn't know about Python, neither um, how to write tests. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> she, had, she had tried to um, get approved in the, last, the, the other round, like in the end of next, last year, yeah. yes. But she didn't get selected, but um, she was very good because she uh, didn't give up. Then she got the background knowledge before applying again and she was approved in the last round and was able to complete all the work. So, and for me, one of the points that are very important to make sure you can see in your mentee is that pro proactiveness and will to learn. Because if your mentee is very proactive, that means if you get um, in a week where you are very, very busy, that person will don't just stop working if there is a block there. She will um, look around and ask for help. And this is very important, especially in OpenStack, because there is a whole community there. There is the IRC channels, and you can just go there and ask, and people will be very helpful. Now I will give some tips on being a, being a good mentor. So these tips here are about before starting the program. So when you first get to know your mentee. So this is something very basic, but it's very important. So be kind and polite because um, even sometimes, even if you don't want to sound like that, if the other person perceives you like being a little bit rude, that can just um, end the connection there, and that could be a very successful program, but just because of that, you are just losing very good work. Share your background, so just set up a Hangout or IRC talk, and just share your background, tell your mentee what you do, what you like to do, why you feel you have confidence and why you are um, very motivated with that project as well. And ask and see the other way around as well because the mentee needs to show interest in the project and share her background. And this was something very important in our case because Nisha was very clear about 
what she knew and what she didn't. So um, that's very important because some mentees may try to pretend to know something and that's just going to um, be a blocker in the future. Just agree on the communication means. Um, that's about, well, you have, you have to communicate very regularly with your mentee, so make sure you have um, a preferred channel, like a hangout or something like that. And do not make assumptions. So that um, point is about, do not make an assumptions about what your mentee knows. Like, I could just think that Nisha was very um, aware of what OpenStack is, Python, and all the other things, but I didn't make an assumption just asking, okay, so what do you know and what you don't know, right? And I think that something that's very valuable is the will to learn. Even if the person doesn't know that yet, that doesn't mean she, can, she can't learn during the process and make it happen. So there are some tips for um, during the program. So the first one I just talked was communicate very regularly. So just to help um, keeping track of the progress of the program because that's very important. And when you keep track, you won't have like headaches in the future. And it's very common that when you first, when you are in the first weeks of the program, you got a better idea of how the work is and then you can adjust the deadlines you had first proposed in your application. One very important point as well is to let your mentee very comfortable to ask because um, sometimes, especially in the beginning, the mentee may seem like um, avoiding to disturb you a lot, but you have to pass her confidence that you are there to help and you are available there. You are, you are like spending your time for her to learn to, lear, to her to learn and you as well. So one approach I do that, I make that happen, is by at the beginning of the program, you start asking questions to your mentee just to see the progress and then the confidence starts to, to be established there. And the last point here is uh, risks. So as a mentor, you gotta pay attention to the risks like the timeline, the deadlines. If your mentee is spending the enough, enough time in the project, if everything is going right, and sometimes it may happen some situations where you can't evaluate by yourself, you can't get answers by yourself, and there is the coordinator. You can get some help from the coordinator or maybe even some from some other um, mentors. And make sure you have a plan to mitigate the, the risks. And finally, after the program, um, it's not like, okay, you have finished it, so bye, okay, we are free. <laughs> so just make sure you have some time for feedback because that's very, very important. So make some points and some, note some situations when things went right and some other situations where things didn't, didn't went that, that right, didn't go that right. So you are both still learning with the process, right? and how you can avoid mistakes in the future, that's even very useful for your mentee because maybe uh, Nisha is going to be someone's mentor in the future. So she's also learning with the process. And always praise the good work. I think that point is very important because since the beginning, if your mentee does a work that may be um, very easy for you, that's not that easy for her. Like in OpenStack, um, she started by fixing a link. Replacing a link. Yeah, in the documentation. <laughs> Actually, that was her first patch set. And some people just look at that as, okay, that's too easy, but it's not that easy because there's all the development process behind that. You have 
um, Garrett as the system for review. You have Launchpad for bugs. You have um, GitHub, and you have everything this, behind yeah. that. Use this step. Yeah, you have a whole infrastructure there with tests and everything. So do not underestimate um, what your mentee has done. Just praise the good work, and the person can also view, feel like very comfortable to be happy and see that she's going the right path. Okay, I think I've covered yeah. all the points yeah, from a mentor point of view. So, yeah, I'll take over from her. So, being a mentee, so I successfully completed my internship. So, I'll share my experience. So, motivation. So, why did I apply for being an outreach intern and that too in OpenStack? So, I was actually inspired by a former outreach intern who did her internship in OpenStack, Gitika Batra. So, uh, I was actually uh, looking for, uh, planning to apply in Google Summer of Code, but then uh, I started applying in the uh, December winter round. So, Google Summer of Code happens only in summer, so I got started that way. And then, uh, it's a great way to start because uh, it's my first open source contribution. So, yeah. And then you get, you get to grow as a person, not just your technical skills, but also your communication skills, writing skills, and a lot more. So, uh, so why I chose OpenStack is because it's an active community. Uh, whenever I used to ask any question on IRC, I used to get help from people. Maybe it will take some, some time, but yeah, it's still quite active. So, then it's a beginner friendly and encouraging. So, uh, like Samuel said, uh, they, they don't really make assumptions that you know everything. So you can get started from the scratch. So that's good. Then widely used, OpenStack is used by thousands of organizations. So that's also why I wanted to contribute. And then it has rich uh, guidelines, a set of guidelines and documentation. So that also really helped me in getting to know how OpenStack works because I didn't know anything about it before the internship period. Then you get to learn from experienced contributors around the world, chasing time zones and all. Uh, it was my first experience on uh, like working uh, from a mentor. We had a, around seven, eight hours time lag. So, time lag. so <laughs> it, was, it was great working with him and other community members and the experience. So I'm still uh, in my undergraduate study. So it's really nice to get with, uh, working with people who are already in, working in industry. So that's it. Then takeaways. So uh, after I completed my internship, so I got to learn about the basic concepts on how OpenStack works. I did my internship uh, in the, I wrote the functional test for the Keystone client library. So I got to know about more about Keystone. Uh, and then I got enough interaction with the code base. So that's really important when you choose a project. And uh, because uh, after the internship, you should have sufficient uh, interaction with code base to actually learn and uh, continue contribution. Code review system and feedback. So uh, I learned about the code review system, get it. I didn't know about it before the internship. So uh, <laughs> when I started with my first patch, that's what, that's when I got started with get it. But uh, <laughs> it took me long to get more comfortable. So then feedback, I learned the importance of feedback. Before the internship, I didn't know uh, uh, why the reviews are so important and why it's important for people to actually uh, leave comments and suggest you better ways and all. So I got to learn. Uh, it's really important to, uh, for making the code better in an, such a big organization. So. Then after, the, uh, after my three-month internship, I was able to, during my three-month uh, three internship, I was able to get 30 plus merge patches. So <laughs> that's also thanks to Samuel and Victoria. <laughs> Then, yeah, that uh, made me more uh, confident OpenStack contributor. So uh, if you are planning to start uh, contributing in OpenStack, this is a really good way. Then I got to know about the Travis support program, and uh, I got accepted for it. And that's, uh, that's what made me stand here and share my experience with all of you. So that's all. Awesome. Then expectations. So uh, it's basically expect what you can expect from a mentor, from your mentor, when you're applying for the uh, application process, uh, proposal for the internship. So uh, mentor is someone who shapes the mentee because uh, I didn't have any experience. So uh, Samuel has really helped me uh, achieve what 
I have contributed, all that I have contributed. Samuel and even other contributors from the from OpenStack. Then, uh, so when uh, you are, uh, so we uh, we were free to choose any project and any mentor uh, when we were applying for the internship. So uh, it's good to uh, communicate with uh, your mentor before the application proposal and find someone who has enough time for you, who is not too busy uh, and has enough to sh uh, guide you and tell you. Uh, communicates well. Communication is really important uh, because it's an international community and that's the only way you uh, get uh, all the work done, ask your doubts and all. Then role model, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, the, your mentor should be a role model, uh, should be someone who you aspire to become. That's, uh, that would be a great way to get going, keep, mo keep yourself motivated. Then clears your doubt, is able to clear your doubt. You actually understand, he ac he's actually ex uh, able to explain to you and you're actually able to grasp the concepts. So that's also so important. And who is as enthusiastic as you are for the whole internship. So Samuel was really <laughs> very enthusiastic, uh, just like me. So that also really helped me keep going. And then I have shared a quote. So give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So it's really important to have a good mentor so that even after your internship, you can keep contributing. Then tips. So tips for all the uh, uh, people who are, uh, want to apply as a mentee in any future outreachy OpenStack round. Outreachy or open, uh, maybe in OpenStack or any other organization. So start early. It's never too late to start, but yeah, the earlier, the better, because you get to learn more and you get more comfortable. Find an interviewing project. So that's really important because during the whole three month internship, you're uh, mainly working on that project. So it's really important you find it interesting. Otherwise, uh, I guess it won't be so good experience. So good project timeline. You should have a good project timeline. Uh, I talked about it with my mentor and he really helped me because I didn't know much about uh, the task because obviously I was still learning. So it's, uh, it's uh, like good thing to communicate well and have a good project timeline so that you can actually finish successfully your internship. Then be completely honest. So uh, be completely honest about your uh, time, time availability, about your technical skills and anything. Any, uh, uh, it shouldn't be like, uh, you shouldn't try to hide anything, I think. That way, that way you'll be more comfortable even talking and uh, that way you'll be able to successfully complete. Then engagement with community. So we had Keystone meetings every Tuesday. So yeah, uh, it's uh, even if uh, sometimes uh, at the starting of my internship, I felt that I might not be able to understand much in the meeting or maybe I uh, won't be able to help or uh, put in my thought, they, won't, they might not be useful. But later I realized uh, sometimes a fresh outlook to, to the problem is actually the key. So it's still good to uh, attend meetings and discussions. Then good communication, as I said, it's crucial. Then during the internship, so uh, after the application pro uh, proposal, if you get selected, then during the internship, you should not try to have any other commitments because it requires a full-time contribution. Then jot down your daily and weekly progress. So uh, at the beginning of the internship, I used, uh, uh, I talked with the mentor and we used to uh, maintain a etherpad link and I used to jot down what I have din done today so that we, uh, he also knows that I'm not stuck at somewhere or if I need some help mm -hmm. or if I'm contributing enough, putting enough time, so that's really important. Then try to be independent because at times, yeah, he might not be available. So you have to be, and uh, also it's not good to be, uh, good to ask him everything, like even the basic things. You can just Google, Google it out and uh, try on your own. So uh, then once you hit a dead end, it's good to ask as soon as possible because you shouldn't uh, also waste your time in just uh, being too independent and trying everything on your own and try to ask. That shouldn't be the case as well. Then seek help from everyone, not just my mentor. I actually got to know a lot of people in Keystone and they were ready to help and that, uh, that gave me even more confidence. And uh, I, like, I got to know a lot of a lot more people and uh, that's, uh, that makes me even 
uh, more willing to contr keep contributing in uh, Keystone. Uh, then blog and share my uh, share experience. So even after, uh, even during the internship or after the internship, one should. Uh, I actually wrote uh, regular. I did regular blogging. Uh, Outreachy actually expects the mentee to blog uh, like uh, twice a month at least. So it's good to give back to the community and share your experience. Then have fun. There are times uh, I was stuck. There was uh, like I felt frustrated. And there were times I felt great pride if I, even if I was able to just replace a link. <laughs> That's true. So you should ha learn to have fun in both. Then what comes next? So uh, now that I have completed my internship, I still want to earn my skills further and learn. And then I plan to keep contributing. Uh, and then code review. Yeah, so my mentor suggested me that it's a good way to learn. I even attended like a few sessions here. So code reviewing, I'm trying to do code reviews, leave a few comments and everything. Blogging and sharing my experience here at the top and even in uh, back in India, I have shared, uh, I have recently given a talk on Outreach OpenStack. So help new contributors learn. Yeah, I want to <laughs> uh, like the, on the OPW channel, whenever uh, someone asks if I'm available, I try to answer the queries. And then I want to apply as a mentor in some future round. That's good. And be like Samuel yeah. and Victoria. I appreciate okay. it. OK. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank, thank you, you very much. We have yeah, we are open for a Q&A if you have any comment as well. Um, we just left. The, our Twitter handles there if mm -hmm. you don't have any question now, but you want to reach us in some way. Yep. So feel free to use the microphone over there if you have a question now, or reach us on, our, on, on Twitter. No okay. questions? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he has one.